Okay, now it's going to be time to prep our fish. But before we prep our fish, we have to talk pans. This is a cast iron pan. This pan we use for everything. Cook eggs in it. I roast a chicken in it. You can do fish in it. You can do steak in it. Stir fry, you name it. It's indestructible. You get a cast iron pan that's well seasoned use it over and over again and it will give you great results every time. They're inexpensive and they last you the rest of your life. The key to a cast iron pan though is to never wash it. You want to clean out any of the food debris that's in it but you don't use soap in it. The soap will take out the seasoning. The more you use the pan the better it's going to cook, your food's going to taste great and believe it or not it's not going to stick. Your food will not stick once this pan is seasoned. It's when it's new before it's got the seasoning in there or if you wash it with soap and remove all that stuff that through use has adhered to the surface that the pan will be a sticky pan. Try cast iron. It's wonderful. Omelets, eggs, roasting potatoes, everything you can imagine. We're going to use cast iron for our Cajun catfish. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to heat up this pan on the stove behind me. I'm going to put that on at a medium heat because it does get very hot very quickly and you want to avoid the pan getting too hot. So we need to make our spice rub for our catfish. Okay, so next, here is our catfish. This is just under a pound of catfish. It's two fillets. What I like to do is try to find a, a fish that's uniform in size. You don't want something that's too high, too, has thick parts in it. If you have thick parts, it's going to cook unevenly. You'll have it done out here. You'll have it raw inside. Or not raw, but maybe not cooked all the way through on the inside. So by getting a uniform piece, it's going to have a nice even uh, cook to it. So we're going to make our spice rub for our fish. Now, on the spice rub, you're going to take some paprika. For the spice rub, you're going to take some paprika. That's probably three tablespoons. Next up is going to be salt. A little less salt than paprika. So we're going to put uh, maybe one and a half tablespoons of salt. Then garlic powder. A little bit less garlic powder than salt. Maybe one teaspoon. Onion powder, about the same amount as the garlic. Give or take, it's not exactly important precisely how much you put in. Some freshly ground pepper, about half as much as the garlic, and some cayenne pepper. Now this is up to you how much you want to put in. Since it's a Cajun spice and not a rib rub, I'm going to go a little bit spicier. So that looks like a half of a tablespoon, I'm sorry, half of a teaspoon, and so one whole teaspoon of cayenne pepper. We're going to mix that around. We don't have to get too fancy. looking for and it smells like it's got the right amount of spices to it. Okay, our pan's getting hot so we're going to put about two tablespoons of olive oil in the pan. This is the lighter color olive oil. The yellow is more for frying because it has a higher uh, burn point. 
the green olive oil you always want to use for salads and things like that that you're not cooking or to finish off a dish you can put some green olive oil over top of your dish but use the yellow when you're cooking. I know it's an extra thing to have around but it makes sense having two different types of olive oils for two different types of purposes. So about two tablespoons of oil in the pan. Okay, our pan's getting good and hot. We're going to take the oil and make sure the entire bottom of the pan is covered. You always want to put the oil in so it gets hot before the food. If you do that, you're going to have a nicer fry and also, if you do have any areas that might have stuck with the pan, uh, where the food would have stuck on, it'll be less likely to stick, even though on this, uh, this cast iron pan, the chance of you, your food sticking is very, very slim. So, we've got that in there. We're going to put that back on the stove to heat up. <clears throat> now, very simply, just take your spice mix and you're going to coat each fillet and each side of the fillet with your rub. Be generous. Put a lot on there. Now this is just under a pound of fish. One fillet for each person. Fish is good for you so eat plenty of it. And here's a little story about how this dish started. Back probably 25 years ago, we were looking for something to eat for lunch. We wandered into a seafood restaurant that had a special. It was a catfish uh, lunch special. It was very inexpensive, like $4.99. We've never had catfish before, so we said, well, why don't we try it? So we ate that and we loved it and we've been making it ourselves ever since. Of course that was back in the day when catfish was very inexpensive. It's gained in popularity now so it's gone up quite a bit in cost at the grocery store but if you catch it on sale it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. So we've got both of our fillets here. They're nicely seasoned. We're going to set that aside while our pan heats up, and we'll be right back after this. Okay, we're back. Our beans are rocking. They're steaming up very nice. They're almost done. Our pan is good and hot. You can tell because our pan is starting to steam. It's starting to smoke. So that is ready right now for our fish. So. We're going to gently lay each fish right there. And here it sizzles, so that means you got the, the oil nice and hot. It's going to go back on our stovetop. In the meantime, we can start to plate everything up. So let's take a look at our salsa and see how it's coming along. see that it's not sticking to our pan, like I said. 
but it needs to cook a little bit more until the edges here turn white. When the edges turn white, it's time to flip the fish. Okay, our fish is frying up nicely, and you can see that right here on the edges, it started to turn a little bit white, and that means it's time to flip your fish. So, take your fish turner, and just give it a toss, just like that. You got a very nice orange color with some nice dark bits that are going to provide a lot of flavor. That side is going to cook for just a couple of minutes, and this fish is going to be done. Okay, I've checked the temperature of the fish with my meat thermometer just to make sure it was done, and it is just done. So here we go. That is it right there. Look at that. Orange, golden. Uh, dark bits right there where it's got some caramelization from the oil and the herbs. Oh, this is absolutely amazing. This is going to go right on my dish. Put both of them there. Just like that. Now we're going to finish that off with a little of our pineapple salsa right on top. Just like that. So this was the dish. Cajun catfish with a pineapple salsa with our steamed green beans. As an option, you can serve it with some Spanish yellow rice and some black beans. This is a dish that tastes great. All the flavors go very well with this. Uh, I would recommend make this every couple of weeks for your family. It will become one of your absolute favorites. I would probably serve this with a nice cold glass of beer. Um, that goes very well with this dish. Well, that is the dish. Take care.